Let's pray. I want to go right to what we are here to do tonight, cover as much ground as we possibly can, because we only have one more week uh, to do this. Father, we bless you. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your favor that you've repeatedly shown us. We pray that our hearts and our lives will be united to walk in your truth, to fulfill what you desire for us. May the will of God be more fully understood. Help us, Lord, to see where and how we need to embrace it or continue to walk it out. Thank you so much, Lord. As we look back over these 35 years, we praise you for the, the people that you have ministered to through us. Those who've gotten saved, those who've been filled with the Holy Spirit, those, oh God, who have been healed, those who've received deliverance. We thank you, Father, for those that came and just put their hands into the work and their very lives. We thank you for what you're doing in each one of them. Those still here, those who are away, those who have relocated, we ask your blessing upon each one in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. It's good to have you with us here again tonight. Been looking forward to this time together in God's presence. And I just want to uh, begin tonight um, reminding many of you of some of the places that the Lord has brought us from, what he's done, how he's worked in our hearts and in our lives. I pray that as we're going through this brief overview of our history, uh, that God will will encourage you and even clarify some things that he alone can clarify and that will also help some of us to see the place where he's placed us, sense the shift where he's trying to take us and help us to be able to embrace that in peace and in joy. I am uh, Raphael Green, for those of you that have not had an opportunity to meet. My wife, Britt, and I were released back in 1986, uh, 1986, 36 years ago, to come to the city of St. Louis, where the Lord laid upon our hearts and confirmed through prophetic utterances, certainly first and foremost through his word, that we were to be uh, involved in the birthing and the planning of a local church. No human being can birth a church, right? Only the Lord can do that. But we were to be involved and assisting and uh, accompanying the Lord in that. And what the Lord birthed, we also were uh, were called upon the Lord by the Lord to assist in planting here in the St. Louis region. The last couple of weeks, we focused a little bit on uh, what took place in the period of 1985 to 1987, prophetic words of the Lord through my home church, Rock Church in Virginia Beach, Virginia. And... Uh, the confirmation of what we were called to do. My own pastor acknowledging that, and they laid hands on us, released us. And as I mentioned to some of you before, we took all of our savings, everything that we had, my wife, myself, our daughter, uh, who was just a little over a year old at the time, Ariel, and we moved here. And once we got here, the Lord began to really just help us and open so many doors. Uh, to help us to move forward in this will. We had several challenges, as is to be expected. My pastor, Bishop John Jimenez, who's now in heaven, used to call those the necessaries. You're going through your necessaries. Put an S on it, right? And uh, there were a lot of necessary things to help mold and make and shape us in the will of God. Well, we, we are now in our fifth location uh, since we were birthed. Uh, back in 1987. In fact, I'll just remind you of this, that uh, in 1985, after we received this prophetic word, we, we did not leave immediately. We stayed in Virginia Beach because the Lord had spoken to our hearts that we were to stay there for at least three years. And uh, during that period of time, we were able to really kind of get our bearing and understand better what the Lord wanted us to do. Uh, during the end of that year, we started a... Um, I was led of God to start a intercessory prayer time uh, concerning our move, concerning strategy, concerning the purpose of God. And uh, that initial team of us that was part congregation and part leadership team, or at least a uh, work team, ministry team, 
together. And so we were we were very much involved from the very beginning in prayer. And we met in homes. Uh, we met in, yeah, that's all we had at the time. In fact, Metro was birthed uh, in the home of my parents on a Thursday evening. And so as we even move forward in prayer and the planning of Metro, um, I, I saw, I think I shared this with you last time, I saw what it looked like. If, if you've ever seen the foundations being laid in a huge building, they have what's called steel pilings, looks like rods. And they were very long and they were going very deep into the earth as we uh, acknowledged the Lord and just not even doing it ourselves, but acknowledge what God was birthing and doing. You know, I'm told by those that build, the higher up you want to build, if it's a 50, 60, 70, 80 story building, the deeper you have to go. And uh, I understood better what God was doing as I became aware of, of, of that information. And I saw that God was doing a, a great thing with us. One of the uh, words that, that I recall from that prophecy, uh, there were three men prophesying over us, and some of you saw that, was this word, I want all of you, O man of God, O woman of God, I want all of you, and I'll give you all of me. The word had come that we would, we, God was going to birth a multi-ethnic congregation, cosmopolitan area of people, and that we would uh, be involved in, in my role would be involved in part in establishing us in worship and praise. Now, I can't do that, but the Lord does and um, would preach and teach the kingdom of God message, the understanding of kingdom living, and so forth. And we've sought to do that. Uh, I, I still know that every prophecy just about, there are very few that do not meet this criteria with God. Almost all of them come with um, not only qualifications, but also with um, uh, with conditions. Um, these conditions are not things that we do to pay for, but they are necessary in order for us to be ready for and usable the way God wants to use us so that our understanding is what it needs to be, our capacity for functioning together in, in harmony is in place and agreement and unity and so forth. Uh, a couple of those conditions are there that we were to dedicate ourselves completely and uh, sacrifice fully. And I don't believe that was just for us. I believe it was for, for all of us, even those of us that would come after that initial group of seven uh, adults and two children. The first location was at 985 Jefferson Street. I don't have a picture of that to show you. And in fact, uh, it's, 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 that building has been, that, that home has actually been torn down and uh, someone else bought the property and built a new place there. But this is where Pastor Brennan and I were living. It's the apartment. They're in the Knollwood Apartments, it used to be called. They have a different name for it now. They're in Hazelwood. We lived at 5367D. That's the first door on the left. Those windows on the bottom, those doors, window doors on the bottom, that's where we were. And we had prayer there, a strategy meetings there. It was in that apartment that the Lord showed me the building we're in now, at least gave me the address to it. I found it in prayer and we kept looking and eventually we're there. Here's the first building that we moved to uh, when we were, um, we came out of mom and dad's home. This is the Thrive uh, Women's Healthcare Pregnancy Resource type of center. It used to be called the Crisis Pregnancy Center. Before it was that, it was um, it was the uh, Knights of Columbus, and uh, we were there for, I think, almost a year, just about, and then, then we were asked to leave, but during that time, we had our first anniversary. I was installed. That's my bishop there, Bishop John Jimenez, uh, originally from uh, New York by way of Puerto Rico. Great, great, great man of God. His widow, wife, is now the bishop over the Rock Ministerial Fellowship International will be with us this weekend for the leaders on Saturday at 6.30. And then um, uh, really we start at 6 and we'll get going about 6.45 with our meeting time with her. Uh, she'll be with us and then Sunday. But my, my heart goes back, my mind goes back as Pastor Fred and I, hands were laid upon us, several other pastors there with us. 
the place that we moved to after, uh, because it was after the anniversary, first anniversary, uh, that we had to go to another place and uh, we were, we were um, meeting at the Forest Park Hotel. That's now, I think, condos down there. But I went by there and took a picture so you could see where that was. The Lord had told us not to go into a storefront building and I did everything I could to honor the, the prophetic directive that the Lord gave us. And we had a couple of rooms there, one for the children and then one also for um, the, the congregation of us as we met, 20, 30 of us as we meet, sometimes 50 or so of us as we would meet there. Praise and worship uh, was there. And you can see those, those areas up above the first floor uh, they could hear us. We were over off them to the side like this behind that tree in some rooms in there. And that music would go straight up there. And we had to, we had to leave there because we, we weren't real quiet. And uh, we had drums and all of that, blessing the Lord. And now the fourth location for us was, many of you will remember this, was the Learning Center, 4504 Westminster Place. All this was in the Central West End because the Lord had laid up my heart. My heart that's where we were to start. We were to go, and I thought we would have a building there, a church, and all of that, but uh, uh, we were not able to do that. So in that building, we were there for the longest period. You see there from about June of 89 to January of 1991. And um, for the first time, once we got this building, we were able to go through these doors. We could set up all the other places. We had to come in every week, set it up, tear it down. And, uh, and leave. We couldn't store it anywhere. Had to bring it all back out, put it back in our cars or whatever we had. And, and so, but when we moved here, we were terribly excited. I mean, we were so happy. And uh, we had to clean it up every Sunday because it was rented out throughout the week for other things from time to time. But we were, we were paying to be there, I think, like $500 a month, something like that. But we met on Sundays. We met on Wednesday nights. We were able to move it to a couple of other nights. Uh, and and uh, as I mentioned to you last week, we were able to get several other ministries off the ground, our men's and women's ministry, our, um, our uh, we already had the children's ministry, but the, the youth ministry, the dance ministry, the drama ministry, several things were going there, even the beginning of our, what we now call our Governor Pastors Council. Back in those days, we just called it the Presbytery. Uh, we, we, we all kind of got birthed there and moving into what God one for us to do. And of course, we prayed and asked the Lord to help us, right? Help us to move forward, help us to accomplish his will, help us to honor what he wanted uh, to do in our lives. Okay, let me see here. All right. And so after we left there, we came to our present location. I don't have a picture of that. Most of you know where that is. 3452 Potomac Street. And uh, the Lord gave us that place uh, through several different uh, tests and trials and challenges. And within a year, uh, within almost less than two years, he blessed us to be able to pay it off. And when we first moved in, we went on a 40-day prayer fast for repentance, petition, worship. We target with targeted intercession and spiritual warfare. As I mentioned, we were able to purchase and renovate this place. Uh, we had to put a new boiler in all within the first year that we were there. Uh, we had some longer services and the crowds were increasing. Man, it was it was great. God blessed us to grow to about 800 members. And uh, there was still an additional 200, 250, sometimes 300 people coming. And the way we knew that that was happening was because uh, we would see their names weekly or monthly. Uh, these folks were coming and uh, attending to be a part of this. At th In those days, um, if, if you had a thousand people coming to a local church service, those who worked in church growth circles, they considered it a mega church. So at one point, Metro was mega. I think it's now two or 5,000. Some of them got so big. But uh, the Lord really blessed Metro, and we were really excited and just so, so pleased. Uh, we were still continuing with our our evangelistic ministry, the Urban Music Fest that I told you about last time, and uh, helping people to get what they needed in terms of, of of food. And on Sundays, our services would be longer than they are now, and uh, we'd have an hour and a half of praise and worship. Sometimes, no 
no air conditioning the first year or two and birds would fly. We opened the windows, the birds would fly through back and forth. Uh, but we were just so blessed. And sometimes people would hear us singing in there in the summertime and they'd come over because they could hear it. The windows were open. Uh, praise was being released. Uh, within that first year that we were there, we, the home going of our, one of our pioneer members, Barbara T. DeClue, her daughter, uh, Rochelle DeClue, uh, joined before my mom did. She brought her mom down and she was with us and her brother also um, within 10 days or so after his mother passed um, was killed in a car wreck. So we, we kind of were a young church. I remember Miles Monroe came and ministered and encouraged us during our, uh, our urban liberation summit. We was calling it in those days. It's now the urban world summit. And I remember him saying to us, you know, the Lord uh, trusts this church in, in the sense that he has, trusted you with death to be faithful and to continue and to go on in his name. Um, during this new phase of our life in this fifth location, uh, some of the other things that, that, that we mentioned, I think I mentioned it last week, was that um, we, uh, we considered every member an intercessor and a minister, and we ministered like that. We ministered with that in mind, that every person would at some level embrace and operate as one who would intercede not just for me or even for just for our church or each other but for our city for our region the lord had shown me back in 19 i failed to tell you this but back in 1980 i think it was um 80 or 81 somewhere along in there i was on a fast in the home where metro was birthed right there in that same room and the lord uh, spoke to my heart and uh, I forget what day it was, eighth or tenth day, and he said to me, he said, I'm going to uh, take you away, and then I'm going to bring you back, and uh, he said, uh, I want to, you to, I said, why do you want me here in St. Louis, and one of the things that spoke to my heart was, not just for me, but I meant, you know, us as a people, um, I would take a stand together, we were to take a stand together with the Holy Spirit against demonic forces that were at work uh, in St. Louis. And I saw them linked up in other major cities, Washington, D.C., New York, L.A., even Paris, France. I still remember that. I'd never been to Paris at that time. At the time, I'd never been London. I hadn't been to London. But I saw this link uh, with this principality, with this spiritual power, authority at work. And uh, as I, as I, thought about it, you know, uh, at the time I wasn't married, uh, I didn't even know Pastor Brenda existed, but uh, the Lord uh, did do that. He took me away and we were involved in, in quite a few things over the years, but uh, eventually brought us all together. And so I always had in my heart, that's my point for telling you this, that God wanted us to be a group that, that were, that was skilled intercessors, um, that we would stand Take a stand together with the Holy Spirit. That's a Greek term. It says where the, in Romans 8, Holy Spirit stands, uh, 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 the Holy Spirit helps us in our infirmities. The word literally means takes a stand together with us against our weaknesses. And with groanings that are unutterable, he intercedes. He intercedes for us according to the will of God. Now, some people say, well, you know, that's that's and we do that in tongues but the holy spirit doesn't the bible says the bible didn't say that he was speaking in tongues it says groanings that cannot be uttered he intercedes scripture says that jesus intercedes and we do know that the church also has been called to take a stand before the father when a person who's an intercessor an intercessor actually kind of goes on behalf of someone else to an authority or an official, to to uh, to uh, speak on their behalf, to do what they can to help them uh, as much as possible, and but they must go to the one who has the authority to make the change. And that's that's who we are. We're a household of prayer, and one of our one of our responsibilities in our role as the church uh, as a, is to be 
is to intercede. Intercede. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. That word for pray there is carries with it the idea of intercession. It, it's, it's really about repentance too. Humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways. Okay, it, it has all of that in it, but it also has this idea of intercession. And everyone is called to be a minister. Maybe not with the titles, but the word simply means to serve. To serve. And that's really the, the spirit in which God has called us. We're not here to be superstars as we all agree or know, but we are here to intercede and to pray. And there's no telling what God will do when God's people pray. We created what was called the Christian Life and Ministry Institute. We're probably going to go, I'm thinking about going back to that name. Right now it's the Metro a Christian Disciples Academy, but sometimes it doesn't really communicate in today's language where we're from and what we're trying to do. But in the Christian Life and Ministry Institute, uh, we started several uh, classes. Intensive care was what we now call first uh, uh, the seven steps in the right direction. And uh, we were taking newborn believers or persons who have been born again and never had an opportunity to walk through some of the very, very, very important first steps of knowing Christ. And uh, we thought of it as intensive care because so many that we were ministering to had come out of such difficulty and pain and struggle. Uh, I remember one lady came to Metro for a year or two and she said she doesn't remember a thing I preached or um, anybody preached for that matter. She said, I would come because when I would get in the atmosphere, I would feel the peace. I just came because I felt the peace of God. Uh, that kind of intensity is, is uh, that kind of issue. And there are many of them like that, that came. Uh, several of the folks now who are married with children that are grown came through those doors. They were just, uh, you know, just out of high school. Some, some had gone to college, some hadn't. Uh, Pastor Brent and I were younger in those days, and sometimes when you're younger, the Lord uses that to draw those who are younger than you and uh, are around your age, and some certainly who were older, <clears throat> but he gave us favor. Then we created a class called First Things First. That really was later changed to Basic Bible Doctrine and Ministry. And in that particular set of classes, we set out to teach everyone in 12 different topics things that every believer would have to know, but also know how to do about the word of God, how to study the word of God, prayer, how to pray, um, and several things, discerning the voice of the Lord, how to win a person uh, to Christ in the sense of leading them into the kingdom of God. We, we taught on how to minister to those that need healing, how to minister to those who need deliverance from demonic oppression or infestations of any kind. I mean, we just kind of walked through. We expected everybody to be a minister so that whatever, uh, wherever you were in the city, in the region, you'd be able to at least lead someone to Christ. We, we even had a class on how to deal with persons who were backslidden and what, what, what passages, what things we need to bear in mind when we do that. There are several of those classes. They are actually <clears throat> recorded they used to be online. We're going to put them back online. In fact, I've been praying about going through and shortening them because we took a lot of time to teach them th through and just recreating them for us. But we're going to go back through. And then we that, that was from Hebrews chapter 6 where the Bible says that uh, Hebrews 5, the last part of chapter 5 in the chapter 6, mentions for us uh, the, the, the first principles. That's why we called it first things first. Scripture says, when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that someone teach you again the first principles, the first oracles of God. And because you've lost sight of them, you don't understand them now, you have need that, 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 you, uh, that you be fed and that, that you go back through this, be strengthened because you are unskillful in the word of righteousness. And then he lists six, of, six principles. Okay, repentance from dead works, faith toward God, the doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection from the dead, eternal judgments. Okay, and we taught on all of those, all six of those. They're in there. We had manuals for that. Uh, they're still available along with the possibility of being able to go through them online. We shortened a lot of that so that as people came in, sometimes I feel like 
a little bit that was a little bit of a mistake the way we handled some of it but uh we're going to get back to some of it uh, because i know that it's critical uh, we can use sometimes other people's material but then there's certain things that the lord gave me to share in light of the vision and the mission that he gave us and the people that we've been called to so i encourage you to be on the lookout for that the, the set of the course after that we call simply moving on and that comes from hebrews chapter 6 uh, as well after you go through and uh, the bible says leaving the first principles of the oracles of christ let us move on move on to what move on to an understanding of what life is like for the individuals who understand these first principles and are relying upon jesus christ with all of their heart all of their life and understand the role that jesus christ has that's different from the role of the old covenant priest like aaron and all of that line and i don't want to get into that because i'll start teaching on it but jesus christ came to us in in a different order it's called the order of melchizedek that name melchizedek i'm using kind of an english american pronunciation of the name but it basically means king of righteousness and uh, it's, it's related to uh, the man that jesus or uh, that abraham uh, encountered after he won this battle and was able to uh, win the escape and, and and the recapturing of his of his of all of his families that uh, who had been you know kidnapped in a war and he runs into this man named melchizedek who the bible says names means king of righteousness but also he was king he was a priest of the most high god and he was king of a city called salem right and his ministry is 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 pivotal uh, for for helping us to see what jesus would really come to do that he would that he would be both priest and king typically he was one or the other a priest or a king even the ones that god raised up a few operated in a couple of those dimensions like david but most it was one or the other in fact one king got in trouble when he tried to switch and, and took on respect josiah take on a role that he wasn't supposed to take as a priest he was actually the king see so but in jesus all of this would be evident so that you and i could live our lives to the praise of god's glorious grace walking out the vision that's in the heart of god for humanity in relationship with him that's also recorded that's also available there are also manuals for that in fact i just started going back through it the other day because we're going to revive that one as well and then for those who uh some of the old timers here we went through a a, a, a three-part course on leadership development excellent excellent material and we did uh, borrow some 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 teaching from a number of different people to to help us work through that along with some things that god had given to me and the, the, we would use these teachings to help us to grow personally but also we use these teachings to help us to be able to identify various ones who could serve in other capacities in the house uh, to give them an opportunity to be healed and ministered and built up and edified but also to, to to help us to be of the same mind so that later in the future when other classes came online other courses other roles needed to be fulfilled we were all kind of functioning out of the same understanding we have the same mind the scripture tells us paul talks about that as well and leadership development is critical for doing that it's during that time as a part of our discipleship effort and also helping us to bond we created something called metro family hours back in those days there were a lot of uh cell group ministries the cells representing that cell ministry was more related to things that god had used a man who's now in heaven uh pastor dr young e cho from seoul south korea he had started out as a medical student and god gave him this idea about the cells of the body and he created little home groups that he called cell groups and there were several variations of it all over the world uh, but he was kind of at least in our generation uh, the pioneer for a lot of that and that church grew to well over 800,000 members strong I think about a million strong uh, at one point but uh, they were very very powerful and God at one point not just that church but at one point up to 50 percent I, I read somewhere of, of uh, Seoul South Korea was was born again believers 
I mean, it was a powerful, powerful move of God uh, in that in that nation. Um, and they sent out missionaries all over the world uh, and still do to this day, I'm sure. But we started something a little bit different called the Metro Family Hours. And uh, several leaders in the church and others um, uh, agreed and came together. We did a little bit of training and we started some of them and God began to really move powerfully and in greater ways than he was even moving in this local services. People open their homes and uh, for meals and, and they pray one another, they share with one another. We, we all were involved in them. Uh, we, we divided them up and according to various um, ways that people were related in the church. And so it, it was a good, good thing. I pulled it at the Lord's uh, direction because we got to the point with some where we couldn't uh, see eye to eye on certain things being taught or different things like that. And some were really hurt because they weren't guilty of that. They really weren't. So if you're listening tonight, I want to say again, I know you weren't, but uh, I just sense that God told me to pull it back. Um, we'll see what the Lord says. He may give us the, the go ahead to do it again. Uh, I meant to put this in here, uh, but uh, that it was out of the Metro family hours that we later moved into what we now call our uh, our um, life stage ministries and also um, a lot of our small group ministry. Everybody does small group ministry different. Uh, some do small groups for various kinds, various topics, different things. When the Lord gave it to me to do it, we, we began to do it. Um, and this is years later, it's not 1994 to 2001, but I'll just say it here now because I don't think I put it in in the years that we started it, but uh, we began to do it as a whole church sitting around tables, eight to 10 people sitting around a table. There would be one video message and then there were table leaders who would walk through a list of questions and discussions and ended in prayer. We also began what was uh, other uh, uh, praise and worship teams. We ended up with, with, with two, one younger adult set, and then also uh, the, the older folks were there. The Urban Regions Coalition kind of came along as well at the birthing time for putting together kind of a think tank of born again believers who were working in various key parts of the infrastructure of our city, economic, political, social, judicial, law enforcement, healthcare, entertainment, business, so forth. Uh, and, and, it, and it would meet, we would convene with these folks uh, during a few of those urban liberation summits. We tried to revive it. We've just not been able to get it where we want to get it, but we, we are going to go back to it because we want to try to provide uh, an opportunity for the Christian community to be up on what's going on policy-wise in our city. Uh, it's not a political action committee or anything like that, but it is a way to kind of take a look at the policies and examine them from experts and who are Christians, both in our own local church and other local churches. It was an interdenominational effort that we were making to do that. A lot of great plans for that. Um, there were other leadership training symposiums, and then we began to get involved in missions even more. Our first place was in Guatemala, and then uh, we were already involved in Liberia and India through Bishop Jimenez with the Rock Minister Fellowship. We changed the Urban Believers Rally to the Urban Liberation Summit, as I've been relating to, in light of the direction from the Lord that he gave me through a prophetic dream. Pastor Brent and I went away for our birthdays. Our birthdays are 11 days apart. And the Lord woke me up one morning, and I was in prayer for a couple of hours uh, more, and uh, he showed me two hands chained, a black hand and a white hand. A sword came from heaven and broke the chain. The chains fell off and across, as the chains were still up, they praised in praise in the position of praise, prayer and praise, the words were written, free St. Louis. And out of that came this phrase, urban liberation. Uh, and we invited a number of people in to help us understand our city Betty, better. One man came in, I forget his last name right now, but he, was, he had done a lot of extensive study in the history of St. Louis. And it was through him that we learned that the founders, so-called founders of St. Louis, uh, of course, we were a French purchase, um, purchased from the French, and yet there was still a heavily French, heavy French influence from the, with the Louisiana Purchase, St. Louis, all the way to New Orleans. And um, Augustus Choteau, Pierre Leclerc uh, came here, among others. I know there's some others, but in that particular uh, expedition, um, 
I forget who it was. One of them wasn't married to a woman. The woman that he was cohabiting with was actually involved in witchcraft. Uh, all of that is a part of St. Louis's history. And, 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 and we learned about that and, and took a stand together with the Lord against it. Every year for a while, we would do either 40 or 30 or 20 or 21 day prayer fasts uh, in those earlier days as the Lord would give us direction. And so it's not to just get in a pattern that he didn't tell us to be in. We've not always done that. I've tried to hear the Lord carefully every year about the amount of time, but it's typically around 20 days or so. One year, I think we just did seven. But uh, we, we, we move as the Lord gives to us to do that. Um, I just mentioned to you about the Urban Regions Coalition, so I don't need to go back through that again. It was during this time that the Community Care Day was launched. We had already been giving out food here and there, but we launched a day and a time. Pastor Chris, Pastor Carol kind of took that and set that up and, and worked on it. And God gave great, great, great uh, fruit from that. I, I like to tell the story of a young woman who, who came. They told me about this because it's a true story. And then she was pregnant and then they didn't see her for a while. And uh, when she did finally get back, she came back and told them this story that, uh, and that became almost like a little church setting for some people in the community. They wouldn't come on Sunday, but they'd come there at least once a month. And uh, this young lady didn't come back for a month or two. And when she did come back, she had a little baby. And uh, she told them, she said, uh, I know you all haven't seen me. Maybe I'm wondering what happened. She said, but here's what happened. Um, when I went and had my baby, um, my baby died. And they were trying to get the baby back to life, CPR and all that, and was being unsuccessful. And so Chris, Pastor Chris said, he asked, what did you do? And she said, well, all I knew to do was I began to sing some of those songs that I learned that you all taught us when we would come here. And, she, and they said, well, what happened? He said, all of a sudden, the baby took a breath and, and started breathing again. And uh, I, I told him, I said, we could, you never know. You never know. You, you, a lot of us you know, look forward to these big crowds and ticketed affairs and all that. But God set this up. That's true community care to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we also was able to birth the back to, the back to school fest. And Sister Chrissy kind of took this one on along with a team of people herself. And uh, really, we started in the park. Uh, we would go. We'd have up to two or 3,000 kids coming down, coming out, you know, for this. In the summer, we would try to do it near the end of the summer. Because we'd go to different community parks and do our urban music effects, sing praises to God, give testimonies, pray for those particular communities, give altar calls, things of that nature. And then at the end of the summer, we'd do a back-to-school fest. And we would give out what we're doing now, book bags, other things, prizes, all that. People would come. We stopped doing that because we found a couple of people uh, trying to take children off the grounds. And this area had a lot of pedophiles there where, where, where we convene, where we meet, okay? So I just wanted to, and so we moved it back up. We moved it back up to where we could get a little more control over it and, and be available. And it's coming up this Saturday. Uh, it's not really the back to school fest, but we're gonna be distributing school supplies, so forth um, to those who are in the neighborhood and who will come. And I know some of you in the, in the church, event, there will also be uh, some supplies available for you as well. Some of you have already received, so please don't double dip if you came to the Vacation Bible School. The drama ministry expanded uh, to the place where we were able to do regional presentations, not just in our church. Uh, when it first started, it was a sister by the name of Debbie McGonigal back at the Learning Center uh, was involved. And then that, that couple felt led of the Lord to leave. So uh, the Lord blessed us with uh, Sister Gina Scales. Uh, after that, and uh, my goodness, it, I tell you, I tell you, uh, the Spirit of the Lord would just do such power. That, uh, I would tell Jim all the time, you, you really have got something that Broadway needs. And I said, I'm not just trying to be nice. Uh, the way God gives it to her was crystal clear. The, the, the ministry that the Holy Spirit could provide after sitting in one of the plays the Lord gave Gina would just be just so easy the presence of God she prayed and labored and wrote out of her own pain her own life and um, 
out of our pain and our life. And so, well, I remember one time she wrote one and she had a preacher in there, a pastor in there. And by the time, by the time they got through, I was just a, a ball of emotion. I mean, just something got released in me. And I'm a, I'm a, I was saved. I couldn't talk. I can only imagine how it is. If you're not saved, then God really ministers to you. Uh, and we were able to take this out of our own building. Uh, one year we went downtown St. Louis to one of the theaters down there. And we went out to the Two Hill Theater, packed out in, in, in a couple of places. And so it, we want to, I believe God wants to restore that. And God's been using that ministry. Okay. The Urban Music Fest schedule was increased in that time. We improved the music ministry. How much, I know that there's enough time to talk about Elder Her and uh, the team that has worked with him over the years, different ones. Uh, my God, Sister Shirley's and, and uh, just about, I mean, just go through the whole list and uh, on the, the band. Oh my goodness. These guys, they don't make hardly any money from us. None at all in some cases, and they've been faithful, 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 Brother Wayne, Brother Kit, and the different one now, Darnez, and all that's been there, I can name some other folk who aren't there now, but God, God used, used, used the singers that have come. We even had a, enough to have a choir at one point. We had choir robes, <laughs> and they're still there in the building. Like, we'll use them for a play or something, but um, God, I just, I, I'm so grateful for the praise and worship team at Metro. I'm just so grateful. And the, 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 the attempt and even the success and just really going before the Lord in worship and compelling us, not through fussing at us, but compelling us to go with you it's, and to come with you. It's, it's just so powerful. And we thank the Lord for you. We had television broadcast at one point. Uh, Pastor Chris again, he helped us get started with a lot of that. And we found a local um, UHF station. We would record the stuff and, and edit it. And he had, he had one year of training at ORU and took it over to the station. They would air it. And uh, you, you know, how, I don't know how many people knew about it, but different ones would find it. They'd run into it. And uh, he ended up with the producer of the year award. And then out of that, Later from that, we have what we have now, the uh, many of the things that's going on with the live stream and, and all of that. Uh, the initial praise and worship team was a group that I used to travel with. We called ourselves Urban Song. Everything was related to dealing with the urban community, as you can see. And we were able to do a, a project or two recording. We had visits with our St. Louis mayor. We even actually had, had an opportunity to host one of the mayors and the pastors in church and community leaders um, forum. Uh, I think his name was Mayor Harmon at the time. Uh, there have been licensure and ordination of ministers and deacons. I don't have the hard number, but a number of people that have been licensed to ministry or ordained in ministry and deacons and so forth. Uh, we were able to launch within that first year, 1991, the Barbara T. DeClue Scholarship um, and organizational development, organizational. Uh, organic adaptation took place. What I mean by that as we grew. Um, in 1999, we assisted in the first church plant, Pastors Frank and Robin King. It's now called Refreshing Waters Worship Center. It used to be called Metro Christian Worship Center of Kansas City. And since that the Lord wanted the name to be what you see there. And I was all for it, of course, because we want what God wants. I've never really wanted a bunch of Metro Christian Worship Centers Personally, it's not my will, but I mean that that rules. But in that, but never really felt any offense whatsoever uh, over that. Um, then I also accepted a request through a pastor from the East Side, Pastor Sherman Poston, ministry called Higher Level Ministries. He see me at, at Azusa and uh, connected with me and said he was looking for that, and we were able to provide that. He's still with us uh, over twenty years later. God is good. Um, gave our annual church finance reports and strategy update meetings, continued with our, uh, our mission outreaches. I went to Poland, Czechoslovakia, England, Israel, South Korea, Thailand. These are all real places that some people raise their own money to go to, or I went as an emissary from Metro uh, and so forth. Germany, Russia, 
the Ukraine, yes, the Ukraine, the Dominican Republic, Kenya, uh, many of the places where uh, CBN is involved because we give there a new creation ministry. If I didn't mention that to Dr. Jerry Horner, literally all, all over the world. Uh, in 1997, we acquired our 501c3 status. We didn't really debate it. We just kind of investigated and discussed it back and forth and eventually went on with it. Don't have time to tell you some of the reasons why we did that, but I, I do want to mention that it's it's advantageous, at least for now. We did this with the agreement that if we were ever required to do something that was a choice between obeying God or surrendering the 501c3, we surrendered the 501c3. We're going to obey the Lord. Now, we were actually incorporated, incorporated in um, officially in, in uh, 1990. 1988, uh, we were an unincorporated church, which if you, if you know anything at all about, you know, the, the laws of the land, that was official, but we went on and incorporated, took a while for all those papers to go through, but we started even before uh, that to make sure that we would be on point. And then almost 10 years later, we received the 501c3. Walking through that process was a learning process for me. I had already done it with with what is now MAI. So we, we, we were able to cut a lot of costs and uh, uh, God was able to, to help us to, to work our way through that. Uh, in 2004, we were able to launch our second church plant, Pastors Chris and Carol Green, Fruitful Light Church and Ministries. They have now since um, disbanded that and they are now working with a, a, a group of other uh, persons who want to, who, who serve in a, uh, Underneath their ministry there, the Fruitful Life Ministry, uh, they help uh, home church leaders, people that do home churches there. And they meet, I think, once a week and then also once a month together, everybody together. But he's kind of serving with those people in addition to the things that you've seen him do, him and her do, him and Sister Carol do in terms of the life coaching. All right. Over the years as well. These are a number of other folks that used to be a part of what we, what used to be called the Urban Pastors and Leaders Alliance. Pastor Fred Bass, who is now in heaven. Um, a Pastor Carl Prue Jr., who is from Monrovia, California, who has since disbanded and moved another direction. Pastor Sally Cheney, Tulsa, Oklahoma, who's also uh, stepped out of the church, disbanded the church, and moved in a different direction for doing more focused ministry and helping people to move into prophetic and worship and so forth. Pastor Roger Cutler, who was at the time in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, went there and ordained him. He's a son of the ministry. He's now a pastor in the, in the National Baptist denomination there in Muskogee, Oklahoma, about 50 miles or so outside of Tulsa. So they are no longer with us, but I did accept oversight within four period of time. Then we had the Urban World Harvest School, kind of went from the, uh, you know, Christian Life and Ministry Institute to this name. None of this, none of those were, they were just titles to what we were doing. We never did officially uh, set them up uh, as institutions per se, but uh, going forward in the next stretch of seven years, we, we hope to really get all of this settled. The Urban World Expedition became uh, the name that I began to use more of to, to deal with all of the different ministries uh, that were being um, started. Um, we, we had what was then Metro Associates, that's an evangelistic community service outreach area that we talked about last time, Metro Christian Worship Center, right? And then the third, the Urban Pastors and Leaders Alliance. Those are three separate organizations, if you put it in those terms. And they are the core ministries of our urban world expedition. The word expedition, we use sometimes the word expo, but it's a part of the meaning of the word apostolic. Um, and I, I, I don't like using that title. I don't think of myself as an apostle, but I do believe that this is an apostolic thrust as the Holy Spirit has called us to be involved in this, in uh, being and reaching and ministering to people in urban communities. Back in 1979, and there's another fast time, I was away and the Lord told me to take a map of the United States. And when I did, he had me to lay on it and pray over it for a period of time, weeks, whatever, a few weeks. And one of those times, the Spirit of the Lord showed me cities all over America and then began to connect them to cities around the world later. But uh, 
dealt with me about revival and ministry that would come to urban centers. And that, that is to be connected back to something he told me when I was eight years old, nine or 10 years old, I think it was long in there, that he would call me to be involved in cities, in cities. I didn't know how to present all of this uh, over the years and we never really had an advertising agency or um, any of that. But uh, I just shared with different ones what the Lord told me personally and uh, was led to trust the Lord to, to impress you, to speak to you and others and help many of you to, uh, to know whether or not this is where you should be. Uh, trying to do all of this, you know, in one sense, I was thinking more like an evangelist and uh, that kind of thing. But the church planning part of it and the ministry planning and the business planning and the other entities, organizations and things like that, God really kind of brought that to my understanding as he showed me um, myself in, in, the, in, the, in the vision that I told you guys about from 1977, where the Lord took me up into the, to the, to the sky and I saw this mighty river coming upon all of the earth and God began to deal with me more about, uh, about the city of St. Louis, this region and people going in and out. In fact, he showed me a building that he told me was, was our international headquarters. There were flags from the nations at the very top. It was a 21 story building and at different levels, there were different things going on in it. But at the bottom of the building, at the bottom of the building, people were walking out of this huge lobby. I think I shared it with you from in, in times past. I, I'd walked in and saw the, a globe tilted, spinning without anything attached to it. Water was coming over and I heard from two passages of scripture in the Bible as I looked at it, you know, and the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. And the, that God would reveal his glory as he spoke in Isaiah 40 to the, the nation of Israel and all flesh would see it together. Then he took me up and I saw this mighty river. It came upon the earth, the move of God, such that the average man on the street would not be able to, de a person on the street would not be able to deny that they had experienced God. I have been waiting for what the Lord showed me now, going on 45 years ago. I've been waiting for that. We've, we've, I've been a part of some great uh, things and moves of God, been able to sit and receive and bless and uh, also been able to be a part in terms of preaching and teaching and various things. But I'm still awaiting what I, what I saw that day. And the Spirit of God, I know it's, it's going to do that. It's going to do that. And that's what the Urban World Expedition is about. Those people were walking out of the, the lobby of that big, beautiful building, headquarters. And it was, a, it was really like a training center, a school. It was an institute. I saw people walking out and, and they had, it was people from various ethnic groups, okay? Uh, almost every color seemed like to me. And uh, you could tell what they did by what they wore. Some were doctors, lawyers, some were, I saw hard hats. I, I saw people with briefcases and they were all being trained here and being sent out into their parts of the world, even into their professions. Uh, to be disciple makers, to be disciple makers. And when the Lord began to deal with me more heavily about pastoring a local church, it kind of confused me because I didn't understand. I had never seen, quote, a church building in vision form shown to me. So I thought I was to pretty much build a kind of a, a training institute, part training institute, part college um, type of thing where people would learn and then they would go. And in marriage and family, you know, first and foremost under Christ, and then in their professions and in their schools, and they would minister uh, and learn what they were learning. This is where the Barber T. School Scholarship is connected. We see this scholarship going to entry level college freshmen as an extension of this ministry to, and, and this, this effort to get the gospel into every profession, every world, world every academic and, and professional area around the world. We talked about that, and we, I remember, some of you may remember, we, we got a, um, uh, a big backdrop that, that had 
you know, nations, uh, cities from nations all over the world. We'll try to get that back up from time to time. It, it's, it's beautiful as we move forward with that. And the urban world expedition was off. Each year, we've tried to increase and understand better what it is the Lord would have us to do. And at the core of it is what we started with, from the heart of God to the heart of the urban world with love, right? Let me, let me go on here. Um, we sought to enhance our leadership development during these years, 2001 to 2008. This is our third septennial. If you've missed what that means, uh, the Lord led me to try to segment our time, teach us the number of our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom in, in honor of, uh, of, of the seven day week, the seven year cycles that, that you may even see in scripture, right? And this is very important because Next week, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about some of what God has spoken to me about in reference to the next seven-year cycle that we're in. We are ending at year 35, uh, our fifth seven-year cycle. We're going to go into our sixth one. And the Lord's been dealing with me about that. And I want to share with you next week some of what he's shown me. I, I sent it to my, my bishop so she could read it and hear it. Uh, probably will send it to... Uh, Brother uh, Bishop Garlington, I normally don't do that, you know, especially with the prophetic gifts, because it just, as the Lord leads them, we come with the Lord laid in my heart to do it. And, uh, but we are, we are being postured for something really powerful, something great. Uh, we try to enhance our leadership development and, and vision, implementation, MCWC. We revised the bylaws, we restructured our leadership, we restructured the worship services. I know it doesn't seem like it, but we really did. And there's going to be more changes in keeping with what we've been seeing this summer. Uh, around 20, 2003, 2004, after 2001 with the 9-11 with the, with the stuff, um, we began to plateau. And I began to notice a gradual decline in attendance and in a membership. We didn't just, just taper off and taper off. And um, we began to re be pray, of course, but also we prioritized MAI goals and objectives. We worked on more of our community service focus. Uh, we were still involved in other missions endeavors. Went with my Bishop John Jimenez to Liberia, Liberia for Jesus, there in Monrovia. Same thing that they had done here in America three or four times. Uh, in 2003, I was able to go to India, Raja Mandri, not too far from uh, Hyderabad. Um, I went to Cote d'Ivoire and Ivory Coast with Bishop Ann as we, uh, she asked me to serve with her in installing a bishop there, uh, whose wife since died, a younger man. He was also at my Episcopal ordination in 2007. But Metro was continuing to decline. At one point, I, I think when I was working on my doctorate, we declined almost two-thirds percent, almost, almost two-thirds of, of the congregation. Um, left or relocated or people stopped going to church or a number of things, not just at Metro, many people, many congregations that I would talk. And our, you know, I tried just to be, you know, keep it real. Some of it had to do with how long I was preaching, how long the services were. Uh, some of it had to do with what people felt was insensitivity on our part. One lady thought that she was being spiritually abused, so she had to leave. I mean, had several different reasons. Some of them I could see some of I can understand our need to improve. Some I didn't see. Some had other visions. Some had other things. They felt that they would never really truly be acknowledged. They were not being properly trained to move into what God had called them to do. Uh, it was it was all of that. And um, but in the midst of that, um, we we went on. And uh, as you can see there, we, we just tried to keep going with what God was showing us to do and get answers along the way. The decline in the membership, as I mentioned, increased more and more. Uh, there was much private and personal and corporate prayer during that time. Intense spiritual warfare. Uh, and yet there was less participants to assist, despite the intercessory prayer teams, the various ones who were being faithful and, and diligent during that time. And we kept looking for it and I'm trying to say, and God gave us certain insights and, and direction, but it seemed as though it was beyond. Uh, 
that the, God was still allowing certain things. We were dwindling and shrinking and less congregants, um, less people were inviting family and friends. And I surmise because, you know, the services were still too long. And then there were times when uh, various things were going on that just people didn't relate to. Uh, as I reflected upon it in the years that followed, I saw noticed too that the, the, the crowd was different. We were getting more people who really hadn't come out of the, the church scene. Many, many people that came to Metro in those days prior to, even though there were people who were getting saved, um, um, a lot of them had, had been in other churches and that kind of thing. And so, you know, I was a little slow and, and really keying in on the new groups of people that were coming, how to effectively minister to them. And as we began to try to do certain things, uh, it still wasn't proving to be effective. At this point, I mean, I was getting very distraught and uh, concerned. We had a number of issues going on uh, personally and so forth. And the Lord uh, um, opened up a door for us to go to Orlando, Florida. Um, someone gave us about, just as a gift, gave us $2,500. And uh, we, we tried to take a family vacation most of the time when I went traveling somewhere, um, you know, most of the cities I've seen in America and around the world has been through ministry for me because we didn't have a lot of money to do that. And so we jumped on it. I'd never taken my kids to Disneyland, Disney World. Most they'd done was Six Flags or something like that. And we scraped to pull money together to get season passes for things like that. So they gave us the money. We flew down. Uh, we, we were able to get nice accommodations. And um, while we were there, we went to visit at Dr. Mark Sharona's church. And uh, I'm going to ask, I'm going to uh, stop share here. I'm going to ask Ariel to play uh, a prophetic word, just a few minutes. He preached, it was powerful. And uh, we were sitting there almost on the very front row. It looked like we were on the front row. I think we were, Pastor Brendan and myself. He had asked me to sing and my voice, I couldn't sing. Uh, I, I forgot how to play certain chords. I forgot songs. I probably tried to go through two or three songs and I forget the words. I was that stressed out over everything. And, uh, but I finally managed to get my way through one of them and came back totally embarrassed, sat down. He went on and preached and acted like, you know, everything was fine. And then the Lord gave him this word. Okay. Let me, let me stop sharing. I want you to you're a part of it. You're not going to play at all. I think it's Sister Regina there. God is moving again. Raphael, when you go home, you're going home with a renewed mandate and a whole new perspective on what God wants to do in that city. Everything that God has curved and shaved and planed off, which seems to have left nothing but a stump in the ground. The book of Job chapter 14 is your promise. Though a tree die, and its roots wither up and nothing is left but a stump. At the scent of water, it will sprout again. I see a stump. But when you go home, there's going to be a little green plant coming up out of that stump. You're going to see a visible sign that that house is now moving into a whole new arena and decade of harvest and growth and enlargement the scent of water is coming back to that house the move of the Holy Spirit pastor Brenda is gonna be greater than anything you've seen your grandchildren are gonna rise up and serve your generation in a way they never knew they would God is gonna take everything that the enemy meant for evil and make it good there's a song that's gonna come out of you 
you in this season when I asked you to play while you felt like you struggled. It's because there's a new birthing going on. There's a new song coming out. Your change is already on the way. So, so, Jesus, Jesus, let me go back here. So you can see Jesus. Uh, that the Lord was very intent, very intentional and very specific with us. A decade of harvest growth, renewal, I'm sorry, harvest growth and expansion would come. Uh, let me move on so you can put this in context. And so. Uh, God didn't give me any more direction. And so I didn't, I didn't try to run and go right into that decade. I didn't know what. A couple of years passed. And the theme for 2012 was uh, we will prevail in 2012. I preached it in January and June. I had a heart attack on Father's Day. The saints prayed. I was delivered miraculously after coding in the, in the ambulance twice. And uh, later on after that, Pastor Brennan and I went, uh, Pastor Robin Ricks, the little, he called me and uh, he said, what do you need? I said, we need to get away. I believe that God wants to rebuild and refurbish us. And it had been a couple of years since that word. And I didn't understand when God wanted us to do anything, but we went for counseling and a time in, in Denver, Colorado for a ministry that dealt specifically with leaders, with pastors and so forth. And it was a good time for us. Uh, when we got back, the Lord laid on my heart to begin to t attend Covenant Theological Seminary with some of the free stuff they were doing. And then also, I think I took one course or something like that. Couldn't do very much. I got tired real quick, so forth and so on. Uh, a few years during that time, we changed the name to the Metropolitan Christian Disciples Academy. And then also the Metro Relaunch was, was, a, was a thrust that the Lord gave me after inquiring of the Lord concerning the word that he gave us that I just let you listen to and hear. The Metro relaunch came amidst continuing to restructure, pray, reorient, and working on our these, these three initiatives. Number one, church revitalization. And most revitalizations of churches, you know, it, the pastor's dead that kind of founded it or has moved on, another pastor's there. But the Lord laid on my heart to do that. And then secondly, whole church discipleship and evangelism, staying true to what God called us to do in the Great Commission. And then also, thirdly, providing a uh, presence and investment in this immediate community where we are convening, where we meet. We had done it a lot more diligently in the years prior to this, and so the Lord laid up on my heart to do it. Um, and, and also during that year, I began to wrestle with a call to earn a doctoral degree. I didn't really want to do that. I was tired and, you know, I felt in many ways that it wasn't going to be something I could use, even though it may be stimulating. Uh, but at any rate, the Lord finally, I'll tell you what the Lord said to me. He said, do it for me. I said, God, I don't understand. He said, do it for me. So that's why I did it. And God opened the door. Several of you helped me do it. I appreciate it so very, very much. Uh, the fall of 2014, I mean, I, um, we, the, the, the live stream began. Sister Regina Gordine got laid up on our hearts. It's really trying to get the messages and the ministry in, in, a, in a broader context. And uh, she had a few ideas. Church of God in Christ was here with her convocation. And she found out about a way that we could do it. And she asked me to go. And, you know, the rest is history. Thank you, Sister Regina. God really used her to help us to move more into that direction so many people to thank i know i'm missing some people please forgive me because i thank and, and appreciate every single one of you for all that you've done we continued restructuring continued reorienting working on the metro relaunch initiatives and um, as we came in and out of the years uh, we just continued working with leaders and members uh, on accomplishing those those relaunch initiatives uh, I was blessed to earn my doctorate, as I've just mentioned to you, and there were a number of different 
ministries that came through during that time. Apostles Dale and Luann Mass, Apostle Jane Hammond, she didn't come here. I'm going to play, uh, if I can bring it up here quickly for you, where the Lord gave her, then also Pastor Earl Goins, Pastor Robin Riggs. There were so many, uh, Bishop um, Wellington Boone, uh, several people that, that God used during um, this stretch, 2015 to 2022, Bishop Harry Jackson, who's now in heaven. Um, so many that God brought through uh, here. Let's see if I can find uh, this one you'll just have to listen to. Um, but there's a word the Lord gave Sister Jane. Turn it up a little bit. You, you must hear this. Uh, I think it's around 2017, 2018. I can't remember now. Father, we bless this, this man and his wife, Raphael and Brenda. And the Lord says, son and daughter, I want you to know that I have prepared you for uh, a, a time of almost relaunch, says the Lord. And it, you've kind of been, been wondering, kind of, Lord, what are you doing? But the Lord says, son and daughter, I want you to understand that you feel like you've been going backwards. But what you've actually been doing is being, being positioned for a launch. So just look at me and watch this. Okay, when an arrow is put into a bow, it gets pulled back before it's launched and you've been feeling the pressure and the tension of the drawing backwards like god what is this about <laughs> why why does it feel like we're going backwards instead of forward why does it feel like less things are working instead of things working better and the lord says that there's that tension in the spirit that i've been pulling you into where i've been pulling you back but it has been for a positioning so that i could relaunch you in this next season of time and so the lord says shake yourself from the accusation of the enemy that says that you failed shake yourself from the accusation of the enemy that has said that this is not ever going to work because the Lord says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. And the Lord says that I have actually been able to take that now, says the Lord, which you felt like was something that, that would almost be a stain against future success in ministry. And the Lord says, I want you to understand that I'm going to use that to break open hearts for my kingdom. And I'm going to use that, says the Spirit of God, so that you can reach your hands right down and to the very jaws of death, hell, and the grave and start pulling captives out. And I'm going to give you a deliverance ministry, says the Lord. And the very thing that the enemy tried to shoot against you, he tried to tear you apart from the inside out. He tried to destroy your family. He tried to destroy your faith. He came after your finances. He came after you on every, on every area and every level. But the Lord says, I want you to understand that not one bit of it has disqualified you. As a matter of fact, every bit of it has qualified you. Now, Lord, we loose that anointing to them now. Loose the anointing, Father God. You're going to give them good success in this new season, Father. We bless them, and we loose that to them in Jesus. And I hear the Lord saying, there is peace in the valley for you. The Lord says, my son, my daughter, I'll always be through for you. And you're going to see in the valley, that's where the fruit will be released. Oh, receive the strength and the peace you need from me. I'll take you to a new place where my grace will flow. From the valley to the mountaintop, you're able to go. Receive your peace. Receive the blessing. Right now, the Father's heart and the Father's blessing is being turned towards you. And the Lord says, Son, 
this is your time to shine. Even some of the things that you felt like you lost and you never even got to start off life the way that you had hoped. The Lord says, son, this is a day that those things are truly going to be put not just underneath your feet, but there's going to be such a foundation of truth of how much I love you and how much you are like me and how much I have called you to represent my family and my heart, that there's going to be a resolve that's going to rise up, that's going to give you that capacity to be resolute in certain circumstances where you won't back up, but you're going to step up to the plate. And the Lord says, son, you're going to be the home run king. You're going to see that, yes, you've struck out a few times, but that's not what people are going to think. They're just going to say he must hit it right every time because look where it goes. And so, Father, we bless them as a team. We bless them in their family right now. Even some of the discouragements in their own family, oh God, we decree right now that there's a divine reversal that they cried out. They cried out for their house. They cried out for their house and for their land. And we decree divine reversal is being decreed by the King Restore All. Oh, hallelujah. So as you can see, the Lord God met us in a very special way. And this is somewhere between that, that um, after announcing Metro Relaunch, it was a year or two after that. And then what follows even beyond that is, yes, just what you, just what you thought. I mean, it's, it's, it's more uh, of the, um, the situation that we experienced, um, certainly as well with see here if I can get this up. There's, there's so many things that, that need to be said, and uh, I'm, I'm out of time for tonight, but I, I do want you to understand that God has been faithful uh, to us. He's been faithful to, to his word. He's spoken what he said he would do. It's very important that we go on record in saying that, and, and even following that, 2019, a couple of years later, had this heart situation and the surgery, uh, mandatory sabbatical recuperation. I'm talking about me right now, okay? Um, with season, with, with uh, recuperation, with limited work, um, God granted, as a result of you guys praying, another miraculous deliverance for me. And during that period of time we've had since then, um, over the last three and a half years, the deployment of fellow leaders and teams for word ministry, for organizational uh, leadership and development. Um, we're just grateful to God. During these years as well, we've upgraded the IT, upgraded the website. We've got more work to do in both of those areas. A lot of uh, great, great work has gone on. And of course, our annual reports. Currently, uh, we have... We're coming, you know, we're kind of about two thirds of the way, or really about halfway through some of our major repairs and renovations and repla replacements to uh, our physical building. We've got a new roof, we've got several roof repairs, platform areas, new gutters, new prima facie. Uh, the sanctuary has, it's going through a facelift. We have an enlarged platform. Uh, we have a new 10 foot by 20 foot LED screen. We've got new, uh, 85 inch television monitors that will be to the right and left of the screen. We've got new carpet upstairs, new video, audio, live stream, production studio, and camera suite. We have a renovated family room. We've got uh, new sound equipment. And with all of this that's been going on, uh, you know, they still, we, I just discovered uh, that there's still some more leaking problems. So when we get up there Sunday, all this stuff had been had been repaired, and uh, somehow more water got through. So that back wall that's really beautiful, and all that, it's now all messed up. And they're trying; they're hoping that they can get it repainted before Sunday. If not, we're going in. We're going to bless the Lord for what He has done. Amen. We're going to bless the Lord and, and get the rest of it finished along the way. But uh, thank you so much for how you've rallied and you've done what you could do. We have two new additional affiliates who joined the Urban Pastors and Leaders Alliance International, Pastor Roger Doyne of College Station, Arkansas, outside of Little Rock. Dr. Dale Conaway has joined as well through 
from Lithonia, Georgia. I'm supposed to go uh, later on this year to another city, someone who's, who's requested oversight as well. And uh, as we begin that process, uh, we've increased the disciple makers training and our strategic deployments. Um, we've also submitted revised a statement of our articles of incorporation. We've updated our bylaws even more. And um, next week, I want to play for you. We won't do it today um, as it relates to 2022 and going forward. Um, you can see here, 2022 and to 2029, that's going to be our next era, which is our sixth septennial, a seven-year period. And I know I've raced through, rushed through, I've left out key things that are really precious and special and of great, great value in my mind, in my heart, certainly in many of you, just kind of reflect if you've been with Metro over the years. But we're about to enter another new phase, a new season with its related roles and tasks and initial launchings. Where the Lord wants to take us beyond that in the seventh centennial, that's during this, during this, uh, <clears throat> during this next one, I'll be in my 70s, almost 75. The one following that, I'll be about 82 if the Lord gives me life. The one after that, I'll be 89. The one after that, I'll be uh, 96 if the Lord gives me life. One after that, I'll probably be in heaven. All right, But you can see we're going all the way through, and I'm doing this for a reason. So we can see that God has a purpose that's way beyond my lifetime all the way through all the way through. Uh, at the 15th centennial, Metro will be 100 years old, somewhere between 2085 and 2092. If Jesus hadn't come back, and I know with everything that's going crazy, look like he'd be back here th this evening or in the morning. But if he hasn't, we're going to build with this in mind that the future generations will walk in obedience to God. Several years ago, I was uh, watching a PBS special, and on it, I saw, uh, I think it was Miss Yubishi, and they, they were having a, um, a dedication, they had Buddhist priests there and some others, um, of all of their salesmen, about to send them all over the world. And they had a picture of their founder and a 250-year vision for selling cars doing what they felt that they were supposed to do. And uh, the Lord reminded me how important it is not to belittle. And I probably saw that probably 30 years ago or so. Not to, to belittle uh, the day of meager beginnings, small beginnings. Not merely to think big, but to think in line and in harmony, echoing what God says. That can't happen if we don't pray, right? And it certainly can't happen if we don't obey. I love that Dr. Cho used to say that. I met him in 1979 when he came to Tulsa. Uh, he said, I pray and I obey. Not everybody agrees with his theology. I know I don't on every point, but I get that. I get that. And that's where we will live our lives. I close tonight from Job. 14, the word the Lord gave Brother Mark Sharon. For there is hope for a tree. Job 14, 7. If it is cut down, that it will sprout again. There's hope if it is cut. And we, we look like we've just kind of been cut and undercut in some ways. Uh, there's hope for it, that it will sprout again, and that its tender shoots will not cease. Though its roots may grow old in the earth and its stump may die in the ground. Yet at the scent of water, it will bud, I believe that, and bring forth branches like a plant. I'm trusting the Lord and have been believing the Lord now these last 12 years for the manifestation of that. Metro Relaunch is now launched in two, 2014. We have another couple of years in that 10-year spread that the Lord spoke to us about expansion and growth and harvest. I'm believing him. Will you join me? Believing the Lord. Hopefully some of this history 
it's helping you. Don't want to focus inordinately on me, but I just was prompted to play those things for you. There are other words that the Lord has given about us. And maybe over the course of the year, as we move further, we'll kind of revisit some of them as well. But I want to encourage you tonight. God is faithful. He's faithful. And not only is this true for Metro as a congregation, this is true for you individually. Things that feel like it's died or been cut down, maybe because of negligence, maybe because of things you didn't know to do, maybe because you were obeying God. Someone said, I must not be obeying God. All this is happening. No, no, no. Sometimes it's happening because you are obeying God. With us, I believe it was both. Ignorance, negligence, places that I fail, but also because we obey God. I want to encourage you tonight to believe the Lord with me, to trust the Lord with me, and to trust the Holy Spirit to minister in a special way in your life. You are a part of something special, not because of me, not because of us, but because of Jesus. Jesus loves St. Louis. Jesus loves the urban centers of the world. And we get the opportunity to be a part of what he's doing, both here and around the world. Your expertise, the training, the time that you put in, the fasting, the prayer, every bit of it, not one thing goes unnoticed or will be unrewarded. God is faithful. The writer of Hebrews says he's faithful. He will not forget. He remembers. He remembers the labor of love. And through faith and patience, we will inherit these promises of God. Let's pray tonight. I want to ask you to, uh, tonight to reflect beyond this time. Next week, we're going to have communion together. But be thinking about this and asking the Lord to help you to think through this. Not everybody that has been attending Metro is on tonight. Uh, I know that some couldn't be. And so the spirit of what the Lord is doing must be embraced by the remnant of us that's here. Don't miss what the Lord is going to speak to us over this next week. These are seasoned people of God, their servants. This woman of God that will be with us this weekend has traveled the world, has had all kinds of opposition because she's a woman, yes, but also in the prophetic call of God upon her life. Done a marvelous job, and we, we love her dearly, Pastor Brent and I. Uh, I told uh, my father in the gospel, Bishop John, uh, when he was on his deathbed, he, he asked me to stay and support as this transition took place. I said, you don't have to worry about that at all. We will be here. We will support. We will stand with Bishop Ann as the Lord leads her. I know it's unusual. It's not always common to be led by a woman in certain respects. Some believe they have chapter and verse, make sure it doesn't happen. Obviously, I disagree. I think that those verses deal more with description rather than prescriptions or for what leadership should be. God used, you know, Miriam as a prophetess, Hulda. Uh, Rachel was a shepherdess. Zipporah was a shepherdess. I believe he's got some New Testament shepherdesses as well. Uh, we learn from what we see in the past, the pattern of God choosing leaders and raising them up. But having said all that, don't miss it. Uh, we've not chosen and probably could have some younger folk to come, and we will do that. I'm, I'm, I'm really eager to do that, especially for the transition as we begin to move over the next seven years or so to get more younger leaders in and helping to inspire folks that are closer to the age of the ones that you'll hear about next week prophetically that we've been called to reach and touch, minister to, and help build up and prepare. But this time, the Lord said, as we ended this particular season, you gave me these two names. And these are, these are folks who are senior saints. They've been in the fight for decades. I do mean decades. Bishop Ann was ordained 70 one years ago in the ministry. Bishop Joseph Garlington, about that same time. They are not 
fly by night folk. There's a depth and wealth of wisdom in them for us. Invite your family, invite your friends. Even if they're not members at Metro, they need to come in under this word, come in under this anointing. We got 300 seats upstairs. Want to fill every single one of them. Expose them some stuff like the woman who left the well. She went and told everybody and they came out there to hear Jesus. That's what you need to do. Invite people, invite them to don't miss this. This is a special moment, a special time. We're not, you know me, we don't rake people for money. We do want you to come to give an offering, of course, but, but there won't be high pressure with that. Have people come, ask them to come, invite them to come, compel them to come. This is a critical moment for every one of us at Metro, even for this city and for this region. I just sense that from God. God has used both of them on international levels. You may not know them. They're not popular today. In a sense, they were. <laughs> but uh, the wisdom that's there is priceless. We need it. Leaders, change your schedule. Make it your business to be there Saturday from 6 to 6.45. We'll have a little reception, a little finger food, stuff like that. 6.45 promptly. Praise and worship. I want to get Pastor Ann up so she won't be up too long. She's celebrating her 90th birthday this year. All right? So I want to get her up around 7 o'clock or so so she can minister to the leaders. Impartation. We're going to need it for where the Lord is taking us. Prophetic impartation. Apostolic impartation is essential. It's a spiritual warfare battle. And uh, great, great things that God has in mind for us. Uh, when the Lord said, multiply grace, multiply please, I knew that meant multiply trials. Okay? And the Lord is taking us through. Let's believe him for that, will you? Don't miss Bishop on Sunday and Bishop Garlinson next Saturday, leaders at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock next Saturday. Not this Saturday, but next Saturday, because we've got to do community care day this Saturday. Next Saturday, 10 o'clock, he's going to be with us. A few hours, okay? Two or three hours to pour into us. Leaders, we're the key right now. It's very, very important. It's strategic that we are in place and that we're doing what God has called us to do. And the next day, he'll minister to the entire body. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for the years. Thank you for what you've done. In spite of my failings, in spite of my... Uh, confusing way of leading in spite of my neglect in spite of everything that could have been better but isn't you have breathed the scent of water has come you know what saints i remember that day when i came back from that word and there was just a fresh wind unannounced in the house those that were there that day could testify to it and brother was looking around trying to figure out what happened because we had been struggling so but the spirit of the lord met us in a powerful way I'm expecting that that same, not just the, the scent of water, I'm expecting a deluge from the Holy Spirit, even to the point where those who come to minister to us are, uh, find that it's a mutual exchange, Father. May it be a mutual for them. May they be strengthened. May they be protected. May they be used by your glory. We trust you to meet every need, all the expenses. It's costing more because of the supply and demand stuff. But God, you called it and we trust you for a supernatural outpouring that will, that will be granted in wisdom and favor and grace. The love of God manifested. Crush the yokes, we pray. Thank you for what you spoke to us through Pastor Kenny this past Sunday. Thank you that we are eyewitnesses of your life and of your kingdom. Continue, we pray to prepare and use us for your glory. We love you, God. We bless you, God. Would you just bless the Lord with me? Thank the Lord with me. Would you say, Lord, we're expecting you to minister not only to us, but in us and through us. Thank you for every leader, every person that's been a member, everyone that's been a guest, everyone that's been a regular attendee and not yet joined. Thank you for this community where you've called us and the ones where we are involved, the other spheres of influence. We trust you that during this season, as we end this time of Metro uh, Summer Sundays at the Met, as we come into this time of commemorating and celebrating, we open up our hearts through repentance and faith, submission and surrender to you. Lord, have your way. Have your way. May we be aligned with you in your purposes. Thank you for the gift of faith, for the spirit of faith 
for the wisdom and the grace that you're releasing in our lives in the name of Jesus. And we promise, Lord, to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. If you agree with that prayer, would you say amen? Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Lift up his countenance upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you his peace. Don't miss it. Later Saturday at 6, Sunday at 10. Everybody, God bless. Let's be praying for one another. Have a great evening.